Hi and welcome back. I'm Simon. This is Milotech, a brand new channel. I'm here to help you make better choices in tech today. If you find value in this, give it a bit of a thumbs up. It will help this video to go a bit further. If you want to further support the channel, hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon for further notifications and future content. Right, coming up, we've got this. Aorus NVMe.2 I mentioned it in the CPU cooler video slash I was going to install it but I never got around to do it effectively so I thought I'd make another part of the video join it all together and jobs are good so we're going to be installing this um, we're not going to be able to see it running because it's part of the sort of an upgrade to my second machine video thing. <laughs> so we're going to put this in and show you how to put an NVMe.2 drive in. You can have a look at it, see what you think and see how flashy it is. It's only 512 gig. Um, it doesn't need to be big. I'll put a big storage drive on this and it'll be absolutely fine for what it's going to be doing. What we've also got is some Vengeance LPX and some RAM. There's only two two sticks of four gig. Now, yeah, it should probably more be more, but it was what was given um, with basically this motherboard and some of the parts that I got from my brother. Um, I might upgrade the RAM because I can put. A fair, you know, a fair amount in there. But do I need it? That's the thing. I'll check in the future. I may upgrade. I may put 16 gig of RAM in it. But I don't think I need any more than that, to be honest. Compared to my other machine, I've got 32. I think I am upgrading to 64. Um, but I can't get hold of the ones I need at the moment. However. So we're going to install the RAM as well, so you can see that. So first off, let's let's actually let's get on with the RAM. It's the most easiest and the most straightforwardest thing to do. You always want to get if you if you want to get 16 gig of RAM, get two slots of eight exactly the same RAM. This is um, speed, size, everything. Incompatibility RAM does not work very well or at all, to be honest. So, to make use of dual channel from your motherboard, use two slots, always. Or you can use four, but never use one on its own, three, always pair it up. Normally how the motherboards work is uh, one there, uh, one number one and number two is uh, a pair, and number two, uh, uh, sorry, number three and number four is a pair. So to make use of dual channel, what you want to be doing is you want to be putting one slot of RAM in one of the pairs. So be it um, A or B from the first. So let's, I'll, I'll put this, because I don't want it so close to my, my CPU caller, I'll put it in yeah. There. And the two tabs, you just, some of the boards have one fixed side and one tab or two tabs. So you just pull the tabs down, click one side in, you'll hear the tab click into the RAM. Make sure you've got it the right way around as well because RAM itself, ooh, I don't know if I can get a close look, yep, has a long side and a short side. So you want to make sure it goes in. So the second slot, wants to go in to the same side or the same B if you like but on the second channel so pair one B pair two B and that makes use of dual channel from your motherboard it actually increases there we go boop boop click click it actually increases the speed of um how you how it works with your processor because instead of one 
working with your processor, you've actually got two lanes of traffic going into your processor and working with that. So if you had one slot, you would basically, you know, if I had eight, you know, eight gig that are just on one slot, I would be using only half um, and it would, you know, be very slow in comparison to having dual. This is in, you know, it obviously depends on how much RAM you actually need or what you're actually using it for. Most things now, 8 is a bare minimum. 16 going on 32 is being banded around as, you know, 16 gig is for most games. Some high, um, some high performance games with mods and things need 32. You know, they're using, utilizing 20 plus. So, you know, but for me at the moment, just to get this up and running. So now I've got basically dual channel and like I say B B first pair second pair what you want to do is go to your manual of your motherboard and make sure you know what's you know which which is what but most of the time it's one and two one and two and you can use either you can use the first one and the first one or the second one or the second one but never use the first one and the second one because it's you, you, you're basically using 8 gig of RAM in one lane again. So so don't do that. This is the best way to do it. And this is how... Like I say, you can put four slots in there and just make sure your RAM's exactly the same. What I would normally say is put the same RAM in. So if you've got, you know, Corsair LPX, same megahertz, same size, everything. And then you can put four slots of that in. No problems at all. It's exactly the same. Um, so that was, you know, let's go back. That was fairly straightforward, wasn't it, really? Installing RAM. The, what you've got to find is if the um, RAM that you have is compatible with your motherboard. And the best way to do this is go to the website of the motherboard you've got and look at the vendor list. And the vendor list will show you what is compatible with your motherboard. It will give you your um, st speed, everything like that in your manual instructions, but your quality vendor list, it will basically show you what RAM you can use in there um, by model number and everything. So it, 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 it's worth doing that. But once you've got your RAM in there, most RAMs are compatible with most motherboards. Intel and AMD, but please to check. I don't want you coming back and going, you said this is perfectly fine for this. So that's working fantastic. I can't do better than that. Right, NVMe.2 time. Ooh, I've already took the cellophane off. I wish I'd have done this with the cellophane on. It would have been so much nicer. Lovely box. Right. Ooh. First time I'm getting this actually out. And look at that. Little beauty. Lovely. And yes, it's got its own uh, heatsink on there. Uh, this motherboard, the Aorus um, AX370 um, Gaming K5, does not have um, a heatsink plate already on there so this is why one of the reasons i went for this one because it's bling rgb 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 and um it, it's a two purpose rgb and a heatsink whoa look at that little beauty oh oh lovely see so you've got here the sizes of your NVMe. So for me, I need to take out this screw gently. Let's make sure if it's gonna be the right size. Yep, so I'm all right. So the mount that's already connected, as you can see, has got a standoff on it. And what you need to do is take off this standoff here. 
move it to wherever you need um, it fitting to. What I found with M.2 is the best way of getting these in is slightly putting it into an angle. So once you put it into an angle, you slot it in straight into the mount. And as you can see, that was a really good fit and you can hear it click. And then what you want to do is you want to just pop it down, line it up with the, the mount, and then just pop that screw back on. smaller one I got a, a different kit to be fair I got a kit called high spec from Amazon it was some, got 38 pieces in or something like that but it was all micro stuff so it was really good so that's in nice and tight don't do it too tight because at the end of the day it's just holding it down in position the the most critical part is here so just as long as you've got a nice fitment in there, and like I say, so you pull it up and angle it in, not too much, just enough so it, you can locate it easy enough, Job's a, <laughs> job is a good one. And that's the basic principle of most M2, you know, M, um, M2, M2, M.2 drives. Oh, can I get my words out? Can I not? Um, so as you can see, it was fairly simple compared to SSD drives, um, separate SSD drives that you don't plug in, um, or hard drives. There's no cabling to do. There's no, um, you know, SATA's coming from your motherboard. It's clean. It looks fantastic, and it all matches quite nicely with, you've got the, obviously, the Aorus sign here and the Aorus sign here. Hoping this is going to light up, this should light up, this should light up, this will light up. So there's a plenty of bling going on with this already. So keep watching, subscribe, bell icon, thumbs up, jobs are good and helps me, helps this, give you more content. Fantastic. I think really that's that's it. There's There's nothing really hard about installing and mvme.2 drive some motherboards have like i say a plate that goes over so you'll need to take the plate off and then you'll need to um put the M MV mvme.2 drive in and then put the plate back on so i'll tell you what i have purchased i wasn't gonna but i did a Samsung 980 Pro, which I did have the 970 Evo, but I put that in my brother's rig. I thought I'd just give him that and just let him have that. It was 500 gig. It really wasn't going to cut it in my high spec that I'm going to build. Ugh. Yeah, still got all the packaging on. Uh. <laughs> Tell you what. Gonna get me Stanley now. I do use another knife, but I can't track that. <laughs> it was a present I got some years back. Can't see it, sorry. Right. However, that is an NVMe.2 drive without a heatsink. So, like I say, this would go in exactly the same way as I put that in, making sure it's the same, you know, the, the size, the space is it, uh, sorry, the standoffs in this, the standoffs in the right place. That would just lock in. But you need to put a heatsink on there or a heat spreader. Um, and I'll link a video below, uh, well, below or uh, above, either or, um, about 
how to spec for your PC, the best website to, uh, to, to have a look at um, and uh, how to build it together. And in there, there's some information about heat spreaders, heat sinks, that sort of thing. Um, so if you watch it all the way through, it's somewhere near enough to the end. So yeah, you'll need to watch it all or you'll be able to skip forward. But to be honest, it's got information in there of how to build your rig up and it will probably benefit you for watching it. So like I say, I'll stick it up there or I'll stick it at the end of the video um, with the end credits. Either or, it will be there and a link in the description like normal. I think that's it. I think I don't need any more information for this quick video. I've shown you them two items. And as you can see, all of a sudden, we've got this PC being built. You know, you, you, you see me, you know, you, you've, you've seen the CPU go in and, the, and effectively the, the CPU cooler. You've seen RAM. You've seen the SSD M.2 drive. All I've really got left to do is stick it in a box, stick a GPU in it, put it all, you know, stick all the connectors on it and whiz it up. Start thinking about putting Windows 10 and then putting it up to Windows 11. Because I would 100% upgrade, if you can, to Windows 11. Some requirements say you need a thing called TMP to upgrade to Windows 11. You do not need... TMP to upgrade. You can bypass it, but you will need to Google it because you will need to put uh, a command in um, your uh, registry. I'll put some information of what TMP is in the description. Um, and I may have a website that you can refer to. Anyway, I've chopped up enough. I think that's it. Have a great day. Thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Love you, bye. <laughs>